Welcome to CLPS safety training for faculty, staff, and volunteers. We require that all CLPS faculty, staff, and volunteers have background checks upon hire, undergo ministry safe training every two years, pass CPR and first aid training every two years, and have school safety annually. This is usually through teacher work week or an online module like this one. We want you to know that our priority is always the students. When you receive your ID badge, you are commissioned to look out for the safety and well-being of the students in our care. We want you to engage all unsafe actions, address any unidentified persons, and help manage the hallways. General safety, we want everyone to be entering through the front doors only. Um, at the beginning of school, waiting on people or during pickup, front door is monitored and is the safest place to enter our school. We do have one caveat to that, is that students may enter and exit through the back gym doors during passing period only. It will be locked at all other times and students will have to go around to the front of the building to re-enter. Um, but that allows kind of a faster passage from the other building into um, the main building while um, school is going on. But at the beginning of the day, we want everyone to start out coming through the front doors. All adults without school issued ID badges must proceed to the front office for approval. What this means is that adults are allowed to be in the lobby only um, and they are not allowed to exit the lobby without a visitor's badge or a school issued ID. So um, it will be part of your job to escort them to get those things. So if you are with a group of students, we want you to um, separate your students from the unidentified adult and you can take them to the front office. If you don't have students with you, you can walk them straight to the front office and have a conversation asking them um, to please come in and get their visitor's badge. Or you can take them to the nearest hall monitor if you are with a group of kids. The hall monitor will then take them downstairs to get approval and to receive a visitor's badge. Classroom protocols. We want classroom doors to remain locked at all times when there are students around. Students must, or teachers must wear their IDs on lanyards with a classroom key attached. If you find any lost badges, please return them to the front office, or if you see that teacher around, their picture should be on it. You can hand it back to them. Um, but visitors' badges and other um, volunteer badges, they are kind of non-distinct, and so you can just give them back um, to the front office. You do not need to open your classroom door for people without badges. Um, they must be identified to come into your classroom. If you leave your classroom, you must alert the front office so that we can find your students. Sometimes teachers, um, are taking their kids to the gym or out to um, sit outside for a little while, that's fine, but you need to send someone, to text Mrs. Jones um, in the front office or send a hall monitor to tell us that you've taken your class outside so we can find you if we need you. We want you to maintain an orderly classroom. That's one of the first safety um, protocols that we have. You need to tell students where to put their belongings. So that means that you as a teacher or classroom monitor needs to think through where you want things to go. So students need a place to put their backpacks. Um, they need to be out of the walkways and away from exit doors. If they're in the hallway, you need to teach them to put them upright against the wall so that they take up as little space as possible. Um, but you need to think through where you want students to do and what they need to do instead of not do. Teach young students how to walk with scissors, how to carry heavy objects or awkward objects. Um, and tell your students what to do if the teacher becomes incapacitated. I always tell my students if I faint on the floor or something else happens to me, um, you should go next door and find another adult immediately. Have elementary students hold onto the handrails on the stairs whenever possible. And then don't allow students to move rolling cabinets or other furniture. We have adults on campus that can help with that. Your students should not be moving those rolling cabinets, especially they are very top heavy and we've had them fall over before, so um, just leave that to the adults. Where students should be. Students must be in a classroom, in study hall, or off campus. They may sit in their own cars in the parking lot, but this is mostly unmonitored. Once they kind of leave our front doors, we're not really monitoring that space. We will be looking out in the grassy areas to make sure your students aren't congregating outside um, of our doors, but um, for the most part, students need to be with an adult at all times. Students have to be in the auditorium during lunch or they must leave campus. They may not eat in classrooms. We encourage our staff to not do any kind of tutoring sessions during lunch. We want you to have a break and those students to have a break. Um, they may not, may not eat outside or in other general spaces like the lobby. Um, they have to go into the auditorium to be under the care of the lunch monitors there. One exception to this rule is during teacher supervised meetings like National Honor Society, house meetings, or things like that. Basically, a faculty member has to agree to be in the room with students while they're eating, make sure it's cleaned up um, the way that it should be, um, but that should not be an everyday occurrence. 
Students may not play in the gym at any time on a regular school day unless they are part of an official CLPS sports practice, in PE class, or with another teacher-directed event. Teachers are allowed to use the gym for extra space. Elementary teachers have them come and run around and play um, for a few minutes during a recess time. But other than that, students are not allowed to go into the gym and use the equipment or just hang out in there because there is no adult supervision. And please do not use the indoor playground. There are places that we cannot see in that playground and it's just safer to have students out where they're visible at all times. Students should be wearing shoes at all time on campus. Even if they're changing to go into um, a sport or something like that, they need to put their shoes on immediately and not walk around without shoes on. Um, there's just a lot of danger um, in our school for broken toes and stubbing them and getting stepped on and all sorts of things. And then again, please do not use the indoor playground. So there should be no reason for students to take off their shoes to use that. Cell phones are actually a safety issue on our campus. We have committed to providing a safe and joyful environment for all of our students, and um, many families have differing views on what their students are allowed to access through smartphone technology, through screens, and so for that purpose, we have decided to be a face-to-face -face community that does not use cell phones on campus. What this means is that when students enter the front doors, their cell phones must be turned off and stored in their backpacks. Faculty, staff, and hall monitors must confiscate any seen cell phones and take them to the front office to be picked up by parents. That is really inconvenient for um, parents of drivers because they must come and receive those phones, um, but it is um, just kind of a, a major safety issue. We don't want um, students sharing screens or communicating outside of their parents um, or any other adult supervision, so we just don't have cell phones on campus. Make sure if you are confiscating a cell phone that you do it politely. You should just remind a student, I'm sorry, there are no cell phones. Um, allowed on campus. I'll need to take that to the office. You can have a parent pick it up after school. And then I make sure to put a sticky note on that phone with the student's name and I turn it into Mrs. Jones. So you can be polite but just straightforward with the student and take that phone downstairs. But if you don't put a name on it, it's really hard for us to contact that parent to have them come pick it up. Student interaction between uh, staff and students. Remember your ministry safe training and avoid being alone with students away from public view. There should be no reason for you to be alone with a student um, where no one else can see. You can give high fives, side hugs, fist bumps, it's a great way to say hello. All other contacts should be avoided. Do not engage students on social media or through cell phones individually. What this means is that you're not allowed to text your students or um, just contact them on their cell phones. For group messaging only, you may use apps like Remind and WhatsApp because students can opt in on those without actually giving you their contact information. So classroom teachers um, or sports teams or whatever, they can set that up. That's actually the easiest way to communicate and it will go um, and notify them in several different ways, however they set it up, that they have a message from you. We use this in the house system a lot to remind all the house officers of meetings and things like that. Um, group messaging um, can happen if approved by administration, and that is with two or more students. You should never individually text a student. Um, so you might have a house officer group text, a sports group text. Come see us at administration. We'll walk you through the steps of getting that approved by parents. Um, and if they say no, you're going to have to think of another way because you don't want one student out of the loop. But remember, RenWeb emailing is the safest way or contacting their parents directly. Okay, after school for pickup, um, usually pickup is at two o'clock. There's a really big pickup for the um, K through six groups um, before they go off to electives. So lots of students go home after core classes at two o'clock. There's also a pickup time at three o'clock and four o'clock, but really kids come and go all day. So it's really important that we're keeping an eye on who is coming and going through the front door. Um, students should wait for pickup inside the building. They shouldn't be outside sitting on a bench with their backpack waiting for a parent. Um, we just can't keep them safe that way. So please encourage them to go inside and wait. Elementary students must be picked up using a security badge. Again, all K through six students cannot leave our campus unless the, um, an adult has presented a security badge with their photo on it. So um, if those parents need to get extra copies, they need to contact Mr. Henry and make that happen. But um, they there are no real exceptions to that. If they don't have a pickup badge, they must go to the front office. They have to present their picture ID to the office manager and the office manager has to check their pickup list to make sure that they are approved or they have to call the parent, wait till the parent gets um, picks up the phone and approves um, those people to pick up those students. And then while um, school is out, students may not congregate in the auditorium, the gym, or any other area besides the school lobby.
And then teachers should engage unruly behavior at any time on campus. Even if you're walking out to your car and you see students wrestling, fighting, swinging a backpack around, sticking a fork in an electrical outlet, I don't know what it is, please feel free to engage that behavior and ask them to stop. And if you are an adult watching this video, they should obey you and they should stop. And if you have another issue with that, please just escort them in, just talk to Mr. Hay or Mr. Henry and they will very nicely talk to them about maybe their unsafe behavior and ask them to change that behavior. Okay, we're gonna go through some emergency protocols now. We simplified our emergency response protocol to be basically five general areas. One is daily safety down at the bottom, we'll talk about that first, and then four emergency procedures. So for daily safety, again, we want you to wear your staff ID at all times. If you've forgotten it at home, you have to go to the office and get a temporary ID for the day. Um, you have to close and lock all perimeter doors. If you see a door open, you must close it. No door should be propped at any time on our campus. Everyone is able to walk around the building and come back in through the front door. It will be fine. Close and lock all the doors that you see. Keep your classroom door locked always. Your lanyard will have a classroom key. You need to lock that door. Our hall monitors will be making 20 minute sweeps. They'll be going around, they will be locking that door. So if for some reason you think you need to keep it propped open for a little bit, know that somebody's gonna come along and lock your door. Redirect all adults without safety badges and engage and redirect unruly students. In case of an evacuation where our campus has become unsafe, the building is not secure or on fire, we want our teachers to form a line, make sure everyone is there, gather evacuation materials. In your case, it might just be a cell phone so that you can take attendance outside or contact parents once they get outside. Exit using your practice route. I will show you a map of that on the next few slides. And the last person to leave the room needs to turn off the light and close the door. That is a sweep. It, it tells and communicates to the other people that that room has been checked for all persons and it is now empty. The hall monitors must sweep the hallways to make sure that all doors are closed and all lights are off. If they see a room with a light on, they have to go into that room, they have to look around the room to make sure nobody is in there, and then they must turn off the light and close the door before moving on to sweep the other rooms. By turning off your light and closing your door, you are saving our hall monitor precious seconds for them to be able to evacuate an unsafe building as well. It is absolutely vital. If you have multiple, everybody's leaving because of a fire alarm, if there's an adult at the front, you can send your class to just tag on to the end of theirs, and as the adult, you can stay at the end and you can turn off the lights and close the door. You guys will exit and assemble an off-site location. If it's a fire drill or something like that, we just want you to go to the grassy area near Alta Mesa Boulevard, near where the light up sign is. If we have to evacuate the whole campus, we will all walk together in um, an orderly fashion over to Hewland Street Church where we will assemble and release parents, uh, release students to emergency um, contacts or to parents. So um, we have an evacuation right there and really it's close enough that we can walk. This is the upstairs evacuation route. Basically all the green classrooms at the top of the screen, if your door opens into the back hallways, you will proceed down the back stairwell. That is one of the only times students can ever use the back stairwell. They can go with you if you're an adult with them, but during an emergency they may go down. You can go down both sides of the stairwell at one time holding onto the rails. What will happen is you'll go down these stairs there's an exit door on the lower level that will take you out to the side of the building and you'll come up here towards the front of the building. If you are in these blue classrooms, your hallway empties out to, through the front stairs. The hall monitor will sweep the bathroom and the hallways and pick up any stray kids that happen to be out in the hall. Do not wait on some students that are in the bathroom to exit the building. You should take your class and exit the building. The hall monitor will then bring all those kids downstairs and they will reunite you, reunite them with your class outside where it is safe. So your job is to take your students that are in your possession and get them out as quickly and safely as possible. This is a um, true to scale drawing of the upstairs. So you can, again, you can see all the arrows, you can see the exit doors, and then which direction you should go. Two or three has now been split, so they have a choice to go down the back stairwell or the front stairwell, whichever one is clearer. Shelter. This is in case of a major storm or tornado. We'll move students to a designated safe area. I'll show you that on the next map. You'll organize children by classroom, take attendance, assume the shelter position, which is just crisscross applesauce on the floor, covering your neck and head um, as when the storm goes over. And you'll seal windows and doors um, for debris and things like that. Um, the major places that we will assemble do not have exterior doors, so we won't have to seal up any of those.
This is a diagram of the first floor. You'll notice the foyer down here and the full court gym up here. So um, all of these areas that are labeled with a blue triangle are safe areas. The first place I want you all to come is to bring your students to the cafe. We will fill this room, especially with elementary students um, first. So all of those elementary students that are coming down the back stairs, great, we're gonna pile you into the cafe. Um, we will move all furniture that's blocking the way over to the side, we'll push it into the game room, we'll get it out of the way, and then we'll put students all around the perimeter and then in circles moving in towards the center. When this room is full, we will then redirect you to another tornado safe area on the map. Most likely the offices, followed by the bathrooms, this side room over here, and as a last case, we'll put you in the children's game room. This does have an exterior door, but this is a cinder block reinforced room. It's quite safe. So just head to the cafe is your first place, and then administration will <clears throat> direct you to another tornado safe room. Securing the perimeter is in case of danger outside of the building. If we needed to secure the perimeter, we'd move everybody from the outside to the inside. We'd lock all the doors, take attendance, and contact the authority, but basically the whole building would be on lockdown where nobody could come in or out. Lockdown procedures are in the case of a menacing person or a um, shooter. So in that case, we would throw all kill kids into the closest classroom, lock the classroom door. It should be locked already. As soon as we close that door, we want it to lock so you're not fumbling with keys in case of a lockdown. We'll want you to barricade the door with any and all furniture you can find. Um, those rolling cabinets or those filing, those large metal cabinets are beautiful to lock barricade a door because they also cover up the window so you don't have to block the window. Um, then you'll, I need to switch the order of these. We want you to have your children sit against the wall out of sight so they can't be seen through any window if the window is not covered then turn off the lights and be completely silent. This does take, take some training, but I want to give you all some um, bit of hope. You only have to stay in lockdown for between five and 15 minutes. First responders usually are able to arrive to a campus in that amount of time. CLPS is very close um, to first responders and fire station police officers. So first responders should be on campus um, very, very quickly. So you only have to secure for about uh, five to 15 minutes. Um, also, um, in the history of any type of school shootings, no locked door has ever been um, breached by a shooter. So um, shooters are looking for the path of least resistance, and so as soon as they come across a locked door, they usually move on down the line, so make sure yours is locked. Okay, uh, on to more pleasant things. Okay, passing periods, we're gonna go back into hallway protocol. Teachers must start and dismiss their class on time, especially in the seventh through 12th um, grade, because there are many, many, many students moving at once. This movie means that students may not be dismissed early or late. We have clocks in the rooms, but we want you to use your cell phone clock for the official time. It is satellite driven, so we know it's always right. Some of the classroom locks are already off by a minute or two, so please use your cell phone. Set alarms on your phone for when you need to close the classroom doors, so right at start time. When you need to wind down the class with an exit ticket, usually three to five minutes before dismissal, one to two minutes usually is not enough time and then when you need to open the doors to dismiss class. Right when class is over, that door needs to open. You should not be having your students um, still completing a, uh, an exit ticket during that time. First period teachers need to have the classroom completely set up before students begin coming upstairs at 825. So all first period uh, student teachers should be at their door at 825 ready to receive um, students and they should have been in class uh, 20 minutes early. Before class, we want you to stand in the hallway and engage your students, say hello, I'm happy to see you, give them directions on where they're to go, we have a new seating chart today, any of those types of things, they should know that they should get in and begin a startup. We want you to teach your students where to stand to wait to be invited into the classroom. Make sure that there are paths for students to exit the class so the new class can enter. I will show you that diagram next. When the hallway is clear, after about a minute or a minute and a half, you can then close your door, lock and close your door, and you can start your startup. So you have about three and a half minutes to, or sorry, three minutes to, or three and a half minutes to, then complete your startup and get class moving. Um, you don't have to wait in the hallway until the end of passing period. Lock and close your doors on time. Okay, this is the diagram of where we want students in the upper school waiting for their classes. So don't let this be confusing for you. There are no waiting in this corner here 
um, because the people in 210, 211, and 212 need room to get out of their classroom. 214, really, it opens the same way. These people need to be able to get out of their classroom. So all of these people are either going to go straight across the hall here, because if they're waiting to go in 210, if they're coming out of 211, they may not just go across the hall and go into 210. They have to cross over here and wait on the, on the wall until this classroom is empty. I'm so sorry about this thing popping up down here. Same thing over here. 210 cannot just cross the hall. If they're going to 214, they can't just go in the class. They have to go all the way down here and wait. So on the wall, this is the mural wall. Class 214 will wait right here. This is the upcoming class. 215 will start to assemble behind them. Over here, 211, 212, 213. 210 and 209 are on this hallway, so they're going to wait on that hallway. There's a bunch of backpacks on this hallway and a bunch of filing or rolling cabinets here, but um, there should be a clear shot. This works if everybody trains and expects your students to do this. So do not allow students to just cross over a hallway and come into your classroom. They need to be waiting in line for you to invite them. That gives you a second if you need to change something over, if you need to move something in your classroom, those students can wait in the hall for a minute until you are ready. When we tell them to wait in the hall, we want them to wait facing their classroom with one shoulder touching the wall with their backpack on, on their backs or on their feet. So basically there aren't backpacks beside them in the hallway. We want to keep this path as clear as possible so that we just have students lined up here and students lined up here, but people can still get through if they have to get downstairs and all the way over to the other building before the next class starts. So again, teachers need to teach this protocol. Students will not know how to do it automatically. This will ensure safety. As soon as your class is empty of all other students and you are ready to go, you may then pop out and say, class 214, please come in, and then they will come in. It is really helpful if class 211 goes first, then 212, then 213, but I'm not picky as long as you don't have everybody trying to cram in and out of the door at the same time, we are going to be doing pretty good. Okay, so after class, when your class is over, we want you to incorporate that exit ticket into your ending routine. That's not optional. It's part of our new protocol for 7 through 12 classes is to have an exit ticket. Set a phone alarm for when you should stop teaching or have your group stop working. Give the student an exit ticket, and while they're doing the exit ticket, you need to be packing up your things or setting for your next class so that you can be in the hall on time or if you are trading classes with the teacher that that teacher has time to set up. It's just common courtesy. Dismiss your classes on time. The door should open because you are done packing up and you as a teacher are standing there. At the end of the time when your alarm goes off, that door should open. Your students should grab their stuff and exit and go wait on the wall for their next class. This is the alarm schedule. There are copies of this on the website. I've also printed copies for you to post in your classrooms. This has our regular schedule and our house battle schedule because those are off. It tells you, and I have alarm set. I teach second period. I have an alarm that goes off at 9.15 to make sure I'm in my classroom. At 9.30, an alarm goes off, tells me to close the door and take attendance. At 10.20, the alarm goes off and then I have two minutes to stop teaching. Most of my exit tickets only take three minutes. So I wrap up my thought and I always give an exit ticket no matter what. Those teaching those last three minutes is not gonna change what my students learn, but having them download that information is super important. Then I am ready to open my door at 1025 when the alarm goes off, my students are ready to walk out, hand me their exit ticket and leave. I have a teacher that comes in right after me who teaches about six classes in a row, so she needs to get in there and set up. So common courtesy says I get out of the way. So make sure that you have this posted because on house battle day, you'll be looking for that schedule. And again, this is set for five minutes. Really, I'm, I'm going for two minutes, but I want that alarm to go off early so I have time to move. This is the kinder through sixth grade class schedule. K through five is on the top and sixth grade because they have an extra long history in science. They have a different schedule, but you can see here how it's split. So they have second period. Second period is actually split before and after lunch, third, fourth, et cetera. So um, those are when you should set the alarms for those classes. Okay, we're at the review, we're almost done. To review, ID badges play a really important role. They tell you who is allowed to be near students and who is not. Remember, if you're receiving an ID badge, it means that you have been background checked, you've gone through ministry safe training, and um, you CPR training, so you are ready to be near students, okay? So if people do not have that, and they're wearing a visitor's badge, you can still um, keep an eye on them because they could just be anybody who has showed us their picture ID, um, but they are allowed to be near students. We want you to know that safety is everybody um, at CLPS, every adult's priority. So just because you're not a classroom teacher, doesn't matter, you can address those concerns and we need you to help us with hallway 
uh, pickup and um, after school um, practices, we need help with safety in all of those areas. I want you to remember that keeping the perimeter secure is a very important job for all stakeholders, meaning anybody that's walking by an open door should close it. They should not feel weird about doing that. I've given you permission, close that door. Uh, you should remember that students should be under adult supervision at all times. So basically, if they're in the lobby, there's a hall monitor there, but um, they're not really anywhere except for inside a bathroom where they are by themselves. So they need to be under adult supervision or off campus at all times. Uh, student shelf cell phone should not be seen. It's kind of an easy way. If you see it, you can take it. Um, that's the rule. Uh, we need to teach students proper hallway protocols. Hall monitors will help with this, but teachers, um, you're the ones who must teach them where to stand, teach them what to do, and tell them how you expect them to behave instead of telling them what not to do, tell them what to do. Um, and then keep a tight schedule um, is courteous and prevent safety issues in our hallway. We will evacuate the building if it's unsafe or on fire. We will shelter in the case of major storms or tornadoes. We want everyone to head to the cafe. Don't, don't have to worry about all those other safety spots. There will be administration there to guide you on where to go, but head to the cafe. We want you to lock down in the case of dangerous people on campus. Secure the perimeter if there's danger outside the building. Follow your daily safety routines. Engage any unsafe actions on campus. And let administration know how to improve the safety of CLPS. I hope that's helpful and that you have a joyful and safe school year.